Hi students, uh, today time for a party guys. Uh, you're done half the book, okay? So uh, this video is gonna be about lesson 10. Uh, where do I book eight, okay? So if you need help learning these vocabulary words, uh, please listen. Now, to help you even more, down in the descri description box, I will give you all my extra sentences, okay? You can find out why Godzilla's there, okay? And this woman is not happy, ah! Okay, okay, so uh, make sure you get your books. Um, we're going to uh, discuss these words. First, we're going to pronounce them, and then we'll discuss them, okay? So, let's look at the word list. How oh, can I best do this? Number one is abject. Abject. Okay. Advocate. Ah, oh, okay. Here is advocate, and here's advocate. Okay. So, be very, very careful here. The verb is advocate. Okay. You want to have, the, like, a girl's name, Kate. Okay. Advocate. Um, here, it's advocate, the noun. Okay. So, uh, be careful. Okay, I should be more careful too. Object, advocate, advocate, atrocity, atrocity, commemorate, commemorate, dialect. Okay, make sure you have all the syllables here. Okay, dialect, dialect, dire, dire, elite, elite. Okay, noun and adjective. Same pronunciation this time. Okay. Uh, enhance, enhance, flagrant, flagrant, languish, languish, mute, mute, raise, raise, reprisal, okay, make sure the Z sound, okay, on the S, reprisal, turmoil, turmoil, and reek, reek, okay, um, good, so that's the word list, hopefully you've had a chance to go through and look at them, but let's talk about now okay the first word is abject abject okay um abject means something really terrible it's usually used the next word is words like poverty abject poverty um abject horror ah! like completely completely scared um abject misery abject humiliation these are really bad words okay so this is never going to be followed with something really really well uh Something that you like, okay? So the church missionary was shocked at the abject poverty she encountered in the uh, anarchic mountain areas of the country, okay? Anarchy. So, um, yeah, I mean, abject is going to be a, a very negative word, okay? So I think mostly uh, the next word is going to be poverty, abject poverty. So a very, very poor place, okay? A place where people don't even have enough food, okay? It's not like they have, don't have enough TVs or something, but like really, really poor, okay? Advocate. The second word, advocate. If you are advocating for something, it means you're trying to change something, usually for, for something for the better, okay? So if you do see um, maybe pictures of abject poverty and you want to tell people about it and you want to get money and help the people who are living in abject poverty, then you're advocating, okay? You're advocating, you're trying to uh, push a position. So in this case, you're pushing for more help, okay? Um, the sentence in the book talks about advocating for the release uh, of people in prison, uh, in prison, okay? So you're trying to get them free, get them free, okay? So you're advocating, uh, quite often we say, have it with the word for, for and then the cause, okay? Advocating for animal rights, okay? Advocating for the stopping of hunting, like maybe, uh, like a really great animal or something, okay? So you're advocating. Now, the noun is an advocate. So if I advocate for something, I am an advocate. So the person is a kit. Okay, advocate. Uh, an advocate advocates. Kit, Kate, okay? So I hopefully I said that enough times, okay? So uh, someone who's trying to change the world, okay? So uh, a long time ago when... A lot of countries, women could not vote, could not vote. You know, many advocates advocated for the right of women to vote. Uh, atrocity. Atrocity, okay? Uh, an atrocity is a noun. Uh, it's really, again, horrible. <laughs> um, this vocabulary list is not a happy one. Um, yeah, an atrocity... Uh, is something like just makes everyone very angry and upset and stuff like that. So if someone goes and 
you know, shoots a lot of people, this is an atrocity. Um, if it's organized in war, that's even worse, right? Because it can be more, more people. So an atrocity is just a really, really, really horrible um, circumstance happening, okay? Something that's happened. Atrocious, atrocious here, so atrocity, atrocious, okay? Atrocity, atrocious. Now, something that's atrocious is something that's really, really horrible. So something that's along the lines of an atrocity, okay? So, um, you know, the actions in the war were atrocious, you know, killing old ladies and killing babies and killing mothers and killing everything. This is atrocious, okay? Now, we do use the word atrocious, a little bit more of an exaggeration thing. If I say that your spelling, student, your spelling is atrocious, it means your spelling is really bad. You know, you spell cat with a K or something like that, right? So this would be atrocious, atrocious spelling. And too many of my students have atrocious handwriting, okay? So I can't read their work. So we do use the word atrocious, it just means very bad, very bad, okay? If someone doesn't dress well, you say they have an atrocious taste in clothes. So they need someone to help them pick out their clothes. Okay, so atrocious can sometimes just mean very bad. It doesn't have to mean that connection with death and murder and stuff like that, where atrocity typically has that kind of a meaning. Okay, commemorate. Okay, inside there is kind of, if you look, the word memory. Okay, so commemorate. Commemorate is when like a society or a town or a group of people they want to remember something, something great, okay? So if your town started 100 years, 100 years ago next month, hopefully people are planning a party. You know, maybe there'll be fireworks and a parade and, you know, maybe people can learn about history and stuff like that, okay? So you try to commemorate things. If there's an end of a war, like last year was the 100th anniversary of the end of World War I, okay? Um, um, people will commemorate it, okay? It'll be parades and, you know, I mean, it's not always the happiest of parades because you're, you're remembering an atrocity. <laughs> like you're remembering something really, really horrible. Um, but you want to memorize something, okay? Or kind of make everyone remember it. So you commemorate it. Commemorate. You can commemorate things on a personal nature, you know? So like if, if I finished university, you know, 15 years ago, I might want to commemorate it. But usually this word is used more kind of like society, like a town or a country, okay? Dialect, okay? Dialect. Um, if you watch a lot of movies, then probably you see and hear people talk like me, okay? Because I have a dialect that's very popular in America and California and all that kind of stuff. However, if, um, if there's a movie made in Australia by Australians, they have a different dialect, okay? They speak English in a different, little bit different way, and different words and all that kind of stuff. Um, almost all languages I know of, especially the older languages, have lots of dialects. So, you know, if you go to Italy, Rome, the Italian that Romans speak sounds different than the Italian that people in Florence speak. It sounds different than the people in Venice and Naples and all that, okay? Um, and English, English um, because it's spoken in so many different places, has a lot of different dialects, okay? Now, my country of Canada really doesn't have much. We have kind of like two, um, just the extreme east and then kind of the rest of Canada. Uh, America does have some other dialects. Boston people have a dialect. New York people have a dialect. Um, the South people in the Southeast kind of have a dialect. So there's a few dialects in America. More people, maybe a little bit longer of a history. So there's more of a dialect in, in different regions in America, okay? So they, they just have different uh, pronunciations for some words, and sometimes they have different vocabulary as well. Dire, now dire and abject, sometimes has the same meaning. In fact, we do sometimes say dire poverty. Okay, so in some, in in many cases, you can just take out abject and put in the word dire, okay? Um, now abject, when we say abject humiliation, that's more like a personal thing, right? Um, we don't usually say dire humiliation. So um, I would say abject probably has a few more meanings, but both of them are very specific words, okay? So they don't have a, a wide range to use these words. So anyway, so dire effect, okay? Uh, it says in the book, dire effect. And I can't remember, I'm gonna review uh, what I have in my notes here. 
uh, dire consequences, okay? We have the word dire consequences. So try to remember the words together, dire effect, dire consequences, abject poverty, abject humiliation, like this, okay? Okay, uh, elite, elite. The first meaning here on the page, the noun here of elite, um, it's just a group of people who are very, very high in their in their jobs and all this kind of stuff, okay? So if you just say elite tennis players, it means that just like that guy and like 10 other people in the world, okay? Those are the elite. Those are the best of the best, okay? Um, elite soccer players. It's a word used in sports a lot. But, I mean, you can say global elites. Um, this usually means kind of like the richest people in the around the world, um, the people who are making a lot of the decisions that affect people like you and me. Um, you know, the, the leaders of Google, the leaders of big companies, as well as politicians and presidents and stuff like that. Those are kind of the global elite. Okay? So like the top, top, top level. Um, now, as an adjective, it has a very similar, similar meaning, okay? So um, if they say elite universities, it just means like the hardest ones to get into. Um, the ones that are famous around the world, that kind of stuff, okay? So it just means kind of best, better than most, that kind of thing. Elite. Good. Enhance. Da, 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 da. Enhance. Enhance means to make better, improve. Very similar to the word improve, okay? So uh, you want to make something better. Um, sometimes uh, food companies will put in salt or sugar because they want to enhance the flavor of something. Um, if you're in some of my writing classes, I'll tell you to, you know, add more adjectives, add stronger verbs, and this will enhance your writing, okay? It makes, makes, makes uh, an improvement. Um, now, the book doesn't have it, um, but you should know that the noun is enhancement. Same with, like, improve. Improve and improvement, okay? Used with the same same sort of verbs as well. So, okay, enhance. Um, flagrant. Flagrant. Okay. Flagrant is kind of like used when um, when we know that something is definitely, definitely, definitely uh, wrong. We use the word flagrant, okay? Um, you know, if it's close to wrong, then we can't use the word flagrant. But this is like obviously wrong. So if I'm playing soccer with you, and I put my elbow in your face. Well, all of the referees in the soccer game are going to say, Daryl, off the game, get out, red card, okay? Um, because it's so obvious. But I'm just kind of running and I push you a little bit with my shoulder. Maybe some referees will give me a penalty and some won't, but that's not flagrant, okay? Flagrant is something that everyone agrees that, that was wrong, okay? Um, quite often used with a with an adverb, so flagrantly. Daryl flagrantly elbowed the other soccer player in the face. <laughs> I'm not a violent sports player, so. Uh, but this is flagrant, okay? Like really obviously. If someone's cheating on the test and they're just kind of like, maybe it's not so obvious, but if someone's writing a test and they're looking at their neighbor's paper and they're like, and then they're writing like this, the teacher will definitely notice that someone's cheating. So this is flagrantly cheating. Stop flagrantly cheating on the test. Zero. <laughs> so this is flagrant, okay? Like obviously wrong. Languish. Languish. Um, we use the word languish. It says here to give up hope, that kind of stuff. To lose hope, strength, or vitality. Um, I think most of the times I see the word languish, it's with sports as well. Um, if a team, like, all season is at the bottom, most losses, lo lose, you know, 75% of their games, we'll say they're languishing in the bottom. It means they have no hope this year. They're going to do horrible way, okay? This is going to be a very forgettable year. Um, maybe the coach will get fired. That's one way for languish. The other one, uh, quite often you'll see uh, the word languish, like someone who's in prison for years and years and years, and they're growing old and... You know, they're languishing uh, in prison or a dungeon if it's in a castle, that kind of stuff. So we'll say languishing. Mute. Mute. If you mute your TV, it means you turn the sound real low. Okay. Mute. Okay. Um, mute, uh, uh, kind of, I think, an older meaning is also someone who can't talk. Okay. So someone who can't see is blind. 
Someone who can't hear is deaf, and someone who can't speak is, is mute, okay? Mute. Now, we do use it a little bit, like um, if a boss says, hey, you know, is anybody here angry with me? And everyone's like, you know, and not talking, right? We'll say they sat there mutely. Now, those people do have the ability to talk. There's nothing wrong with their throat. But maybe they're scared of the boss, okay? So they're not they're not speaking there in that case, okay? So it can also be used as an exaggeration, okay? You can say like that child has been mute since they were born. It means they're not able to talk, okay? So mute. Uh, raise. Raise, okay? Raise is usually you destroy, not you, <laughs> I hope, but like a, a group of people will destroy a town. Um, you can use it for one building, you know, they raised the school. Um, it does not mean lift up, okay? That's R-A-I-S-E. Be very careful. On um, this R-A-Z-E, Z-E, Z -E, if you want to do the American alphabet, um, raise here, it actually means to completely bring the building down. So when they say, you know, they raised the school, probably burnt it down in a fire, okay? Uh, my example sentence, I think, talks about Vikings. Vikings raising a town. And that just means they burnt everything to the ground, destroyed this, the town, okay? You can also use it uh, for nature things, you know, the earthquake, the fire, the natural fire, whatever. The typhoon raised the, raised the, um, the, the town, the beachfront town, okay, completely gone. Uh, reprisal is similar to the word revenge, okay? Um, please, a lot of my students use the word revenge as a verb. Revenge is not a verb, okay? We usually say get revenge, okay? So um, with reprisal, um, uh, we also say, you know, he, he wants to get his reprisal as well. I mean, you want to get um, um, revenge, basically. Um, I think reprisal is usually not quite as severe. You know, we use the word revenge a lot for like, um, things like, um, uh, you know, like someone murdered my, my family member, murdered my brother, something like that. So I want revenge, okay? Uh, reprisal, well, we use it in war a, a lot too. So actually they're both pretty serious. So uh, if someone uh, got reprisal, so, you know, in a, in a war, if um, my army raises your city, then your army will do the best to raise one of my cities, okay? Um, that'll be a reprisal for my original attack, okay? So use the word reprisal with the word for after quite often. Turmoil. Turmoil does mean like anarchy, uproar, chaos. These words are all fairly similar. Um, so turmoil, tumult. I think we did the word tumult as well. Maybe uh, chapter eight or chapter nine. Um, oh, lesson. I forgot, where do I use the word lesson? Lesson eight or lesson nine. I think they had the word tumult, but turmoil, yeah. All this kind of like, people angry and, you know, maybe no, no one's listening to the police and, you know, cars are burning and stuff like that. This is all turmoil. Now you can say I have turmoil in my life, you know, um, lost a job, girlfriend broke up with you, that kind of stuff all at once. And you say you have turmoil in your life. Great. And the last one is reek. Reek is also a negative word. Um, most commonly used with the word havoc, reek havoc. So we say the typh typhoon, wreak havoc on the city you know maybe all the electricity is gone um all the plumbing and the water is is not good anymore um you know this is wreaked many people dead hospitals injured you know full um we say wreak havoc okay it's kind of shut the city down um so wreak just means like it you do something terrible uh to uh an area so that to answer the question is why godzilla is here in my picture, okay? So here, Godzilla is about to wreak havoc on San Francisco. Yeah. Okay. Wait, and she reek, uh, the manager wreaked his anger with a very audible scream of frustration. The customers were scared. Um, I said his anger here. There's a girl there. I might try to fix that. <laughs> Maybe I couldn't find a, a guy screaming. But anyways, uh, so wreaked his anger. Um, wreak her anger, we'll say. Okay. Anyways, please review those words. Uh, again, if you're one of my students, test coming up. 
Um, if not, congratulations, you finished off the book, okay? Uh, I'm gonna put this video, um, and then after this video, there's going to be a review lesson, okay? So um, I highly recommend after um, five classes and then another five classes doing some review, okay? Especially if you've done it one, one a week. So you haven't done a review in five weeks. So um, look at the next video. Uh, if you have any problems, let me know. Good luck, good luck studying. Hard list group of words. And not a happy group. <laughs> Try to be happy after doing this homework. Bye-bye.